Well, I hope this angle is good. We'll see at the end. Hey, everybody. It's time for another video update from me. Um, it dawned on me that I'm going to be celebrating 15 months living full-time in my RV, the Defiant. And um, I wanted to do a video and talk about some of the insights I've had so far with um, the types of other nomadic people that I've encountered thus far on this um, this adventure I'm calling my life. <laughs> I was actually inspired to do this video by some other videos I was watching this morning. Um, YouTubers who document their lives and their different modes of travel and it dawned on me that you know I've kind of discovered three distinct um, traveler types since I've been out on the road for these uh, 15 months or so. And um, I wanted to talk about the things I have in common with these different types or categories and some of the things I don't have in common with them and um, I guess my feelings about them. And um, yeah, so I wanted to make a video about it so you guys could actually see me instead of just reading my words on the page. So anyway, um, let's see. I wrote everything down, so I'll try not to glance down too much. But if I do, I do. So anyway, three types of travelers that I have encountered so far. Uh, the first one being traditional RVers, people who have motorhomes or travel trailers. Um, I kind of divided those up into two categories, people with really new expensive RVs and then people who have um, older, less expensive RVs and then people like me who have really old RVs <laughs> that are dirt cheap. But um, the first, again, the traditional RVer, I'm finding that for the most part, 90% of them are a lot older than me. The youngest I've come up and discovered so far are like in their late 50s or early 60s. Um, you know, they've worked all their lives and now they've retired, they sold their homes and bought um, rigs and they travel around that way. Now what I find that I have in common with them are that we stay in a place a lot longer. Um, we don't travel around as much. You guys know I'll go and work in a national park for a few months and then you know when I'm tired of living in seclusion <laughs> in nature and I need connection with people and, and steady regular internet I'll come back to a city and find a job you know a regular type of job and um, live that way but I'm still in the spot for like four to six months at a time which is a benefit but I'll talk about that later and um, I do have that in common uh, with the other traditional RVers um, the comforts that we have from living in an RV and that it feels more like a regular sticks and bricks home in that, you know, I've got a shower and, and a refrigerator and a stove to cook on. And not everyone that does this nomadic lifestyle has that. So, you know, we've got that in common. But what we don't have in common, other than the biggest, the age thing, another thing would be um, where we stay. I have recently discovered that there is um, an issue with for RV parks and campgrounds and RV resorts to have RVers who have really old rigs. I know it has a lot to do with the image that they want to portray for their campground and that, you know, having an older rig that's maybe not in the best shape or condition is not um, in line with the image that they want to portray there. But um, as a general rule, I'm finding that a lot of RV resorts, campgrounds, and parks don't want rigs that are older than 10 years old. And you guys know the Defiant. She's an old girl. She'll be 28 years old in um, April next year. So, you know, I'm not able to stay in those places, which enhampers 
my ability to connect with them and to, um, you know, just experience that with them. Um, another thing is they don't work. <laughs> They're retired. And so, you know, they get to relax and, you know, hang out and do whatever the choices are in life. But at least, you know, three to five days a week, I got to get up and go to work. And so that's not something that they, you know, can identify with. And you know, my life is just, <laughs> I got to work. I got to earn a living. I don't have a retirement fund. Hell, I don't have much of a savings, but, you know, I'm out here doing it anyway. So I got to go to work. So that's a big difference between me and the category of traditional RVers. Now, I have discovered this whole new thing that I really didn't know anything about, and this is van dwelling, the second category. And van dwellers, I have a lot more in common with. First and foremost, I see them as being closer to my age. Um, they tend to be like mid-50s or 50 and younger. I've met a lot who are in their 20s out here doing it and living in um, conversion vans or vans that they've just modified to um, make it livable, mimicking like some of the things that you would have in a home or in an RV. So, you know, the age thing and all the commonalities that come with being closer to me in age are, are great. But some of the things we don't have in common are um, they face a lot more challenges in trying to maintain the comforts that, they, that anyone would want to have in life, like um, showers and a large enough facility to cook. Space to move around, I see, is one of the biggest issues for them and, and what we don't have in common. The Defiant is 32 feet long. She's actually more space than I realized that I needed, but I can still stand upright <laughs> inside of Defiant. Whereas Van Dweller, you know, if you're over like five foot two, you know, you have issues with standing up in your rigs. Um, one thing, going back to the commonalities, though, we have, um, we face the same sort of stigmas, like I was talking about before with um, RV parks not wanting us to stay there. Um, van dwellers get it more than anyone. I don't know, there's a very negative connotation around someone who lives in a van. It seems like it's an unintentional choice that they're homeless and that they're more prone to violent and criminal activity. So. You know, they face a lot of stigma that way. But another plus is that they can explore further off the beaten path. They've got smaller rigs, so they get better gas mileage, which is awesome. <laughs> and um, they can go to more remote places, more places off the grid, further out than I could or would even be willing to try and drive, you know, my motor home through. But I, just like with the traditional RVers and their newer rigs, I don't feel like I quite fit into that element because I don't face some of those same challenges that they have. Um, but one last thing that I do have in common, you know, I'm totally going out of order of what I wrote down here, that um, we tend to still need to work and have jobs <laughs> because we're not retired and we do more of these work camping gigs where in exchange for um, reduced prices on, you know, camping there or free camping spaces altogether, you know, we're in national parks and national forests working jobs and enjoying nature at the same time. So I, I do feel like I fit more in with van dwellers than I do with the traditional RVers who have newer motorhomes and travel trailers. But obviously I don't fit in with that category too much either. And then the last category that I have stumbled upon, which I do feel a more spiritual connection with, I guess, for the lack of a better term, are the hikers. Um, I've been um, watching and learning a lot about people who like will hike the Appalachian Trail or, or uh, hike the Pacific Coast Trail, Pacific Crest Trail. <laughs> and um, 
I mean, they're serious minimalists, which I definitely identify with. I have been minimizing and minimizing and minimizing my possessions, you know, my clothing, the amount of stuff that I just have and carry around. And, and, and they take it to an even further extreme in that, you know, it's what they can carry on their backs that they take along with them. And so I'm, I'm really drawn to that aspect and drawn to them because of it. But the greatest challenge, again, that they face are the basic necessities in life. You know, a shower, running water is a treat. <laughs> um, there's definitely a little bit of a stigma as they wander back in through towns. I was in Yellowstone and there were some hikers there and the guy kind of ran out of money and food and he was outside of the cafe that I was working in and they ended up calling the rangers on him and you know I just felt really bad for the guy because he's just trying to you know live this lifestyle of traveling around and you know taking only what he needs and having only what he can carry with him but you know people looked at him as if he were a vagrant and that he would be up to some bad activity and you know I just really felt sorry for the guys and I know that you know once you get off the trail and you go into towns and you know it's been <laughs> a, a week or two since you've had a real shower you know other than baby wipes and, and, and GI showers that people look at you and kind of judge you differently but I love the fact that hikers totally submerge themselves in nature and that they're just constantly out in the elements and, you know, enjoying the solitude and then the camaraderie of community when they do come together. You know, it's really appealing to me. But when I look at all of those categories, I can't help but feel a little bit disconnected and... Um, just not a part of any one specific group, you know. It can be a little disheartening at times, a little lonely. I will throw that word out sometimes because, you know, we don't have these bonds that stem over large categories. I mean, other than our, our lust for travel, which is the biggest bond and, you know, why we do encounter each other with such frequency. But you've got someone like me who has, you know, yeah, a motorhome, but an older one. And I still can't go all to all the places that I would like to go and stay in places that I would like to. People still kind of discriminate against me based upon the type of rig that I'm driving and its age. Um, you know, I can't go to these remote places. I don't travel as fast as some other traditional um, RVers do and that I've known some people a little you know they they drive every day you know whether it be 40 50 miles a day they're just constantly on the move where I like to go to a place and stay for like six months you know and really get to know a town or a city or a national park and really experience it more than just the the tourist attractions you know, actually make a life for myself in that area at the time. So when I look at all of those factors, again, I say to myself, darling, you don't quite fit into any group. 